Hi, this is Russell Stanar from teachertrainingvideos.com. If you're looking for an alternative to Kahoot, and actually a tool that's even easier to use than Kahoot, ideal for if you're teaching in an online situation and you're teaching, say, in Zoom, and you want to do a little activity to check the students follow you, or you're teaching in a hybrid situation, so you've got the students in the class that can log in and play the game with their telephones and the students online at home can log in from their computers and play a game. So it's great for hybrid classes. Or you can use this technology in the classroom as well, get the students to pull out their telephones and play the game. So it's an assessment tool, formative assessment, lots of different question types. You can include video, you can include pictures, it's free, it's completely free, it's called quizzes.com. But what we're gonna focus on is just how flexible this technology is in the class, online or hybrid. It will work in all three contexts. Let's get started. So you can see the name of the technology, it's called quizzes quizzes.com and you will need to create an account so you will have to log in and put in your name and your email address to create an account once you've got an account created it's really easy you literally just make a quiz and you've got various types of questions and we'll look at that in a minute but let me start by actually going to my library and just doing a really simple example okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one here that's just got four questions uh, you can see I've made a number of these ones, different levels for students. But I'm going to click on this one here and just sort of demonstrate to you how it works. So I've made the quiz and the quiz has got four questions. Okay, And all this is doing really, it's for really low level students who are learning English. And it's basically a quiz that's connected to them visiting London and then answering some questions about London. Okay, But obviously the context can be completely different. Now, if I wanted to play this quiz online with my students, then I can click on Start a Live Quiz. So I would click here, and I'm going to choose, in this particular case, I'm going to choose Classic. And then what I would do is I would use Classic here, and I would just come down here. There's not really a lot to change, in all honesty. And simply, in fact, you can leave all those settings as they are. You would click on Continue, and this is really where the power comes. Your students would now go on to joinmyquiz.com. So they would pick up their telephones. They would write in, or go to joinmyquiz.com, and in that, it, there is a space to put in this number. They will then put in this number, and they will be able to log in to the quiz. So you could have 50, 60, 100, I've even done it with way over 100 people logging in and doing the quiz. And of course, all the data comes back to me. Now what I'm gonna do is actually show you this in action. And how I can do that is that I'm gonna log in on another browser as the student and do this quiz and then look at the data afterwards. So I'm gonna write in that um, address okay so I literally I'm logging in as if I was a student and you'll see it opens up this page where all the students need to do then is to add the code that we're going to give the students and then they can actually access the uh, quiz so just jumping back here we can clearly see that the quiz note code is 245138 so if we jump back as logging in as the student 245138 and we wrote that in two four five one three eight you will see that immediately we will be able to join the activity we have to add in our names as a student and there's obviously this is really useful because it means that you can contract you can track the students so they click on start now obviously the game hasn't actually started yet but I can see that I'm logged in I'm just waiting for other players to join and I'm waiting of course for the teacher to start the game now the teacher will see the names appear. So we can see already that one person has logged into this game and it tells me that there's one person logged in and I can see their name. If you had 100 people, it would say 100 here and then you would have 100 names of 100 people that were logged into the game. As soon as you click on the start button, the game starts and the students can work through the questions. Now, it's not controlled by the teacher. So the students start working through the questions and then obviously they come to the end of the questions 
and for them the game is then over so the best thing to do is to have a kind of limit on it say right you've got now seven minutes to do the quiz or 10 minutes to do the quiz and then you let the students do the activity and then afterwards you will come back and you can look at the data with the quiz and, far, and perhaps go through any questions that they got wrong etc so let's imagine that we've now got 20 students logged in okay we click on the start button and the game now starts okay now let's have a look what the student is seeing now so the game actually starts for the student now in this case obviously it was really really simple but you can have quite sophisticated questions with quite sophisticated answers here so it doesn't have to be anything simplistic um, I've used this for example this activity in some of my language classes in Spanish and my levels proficiency obviously this was a really low level one but notice that as a student you do the question and then it automatically moves on to the next question okay so the students are working on their own because we chose what we call student paced we can actually choose if we want to teacher pace but really when you're working with students in the university context it's much better for them to do it as a kind of a student paced activity so I'm quickly answering all of the questions in this quiz and there's only four anyway and then what I'm going to show you is what does this all look like for the teacher afterwards obviously if you've got 20 or 30 or 40 people online then all of this data as I'm answering these questions is all coming back to the teacher it tells me I got three correct I got one incorrect it gives me my percentage and the game's over now I could go back to my live session with my teacher hopefully all the other students are finishing let's see what information the teacher gets once the students have done the game you will get instantly a breakdown of every student what questions they got wrong what questions they got right and this is really useful let's imagine you have say 10 students in the list here you could see exactly did all the students get question one right or wrong it actually will tell you the percentage and therefore you immediately know right i need to go back over question one because the students are having trouble with it or i need don't need to go over question four because all of the students got it right so it's great as a way of kind of checking understanding it's great as a way of just adding a different dimension when you're doing a live session and make it really engaging for the students to work on the activity now what I'm going to do now is jump over and show you how to create a quiz so I'm going to jump back here by clicking on quizzes okay that brings me back to the home page I'm going to skip this for now every so often it kind of encourages you to sign up for a paid account but I'm not interested so I'm just going to click on skip for now and bring me back to the home page there is no need to pay when you log into this system just log in as a teacher and that way you've always got access to the free account now to create a quiz all I need to do is to click on this button here so I'm going to click on this button and I'm going to do a quiz okay because really what I want to do is use this in an online lesson and I'm going to just call this a quiz on learning English or let's say quiz on English for simple case okay I just simply give it a topic so we're going to call it um, these two English and professional development click on next and now I can start to create the questions now you've actually got a number of question types that you can create I in the quiz that we've just done together I use multiple choice and obviously my particular quiz was very very simplistic but we could try it with fill in the blank or poll or open-ended checkbox etc I'm going to work with multiple choice I'm going to produce four questions so I'm going to click here and straight away we can just add in the question now as you can see straight away you're not limited to, to writing a really simple sentence if you want to put something a little bit more complex in there you can now I'm going to write the question in here and then I'm going to add the four options and I won't keep the video on I'll do that instantly and then come back uh, through the video so I've written in my four questions and the uh, sorry the four answers so English has a lot of Latin words these were introduced into the language by the Normans after 1066 is the correct answer so it was the influence of the Normans that introduced the majority of the 
uh, Latin-based words that are in the English language. Well, it certainly wasn't because of the EU. Got to choose the correct answer. That's really, really important. There's nothing else I need to do here. I click on save. One interesting thing is to decide how long you want the students to be able to answer the question. I normally make the first question 30 seconds and then I get a little bit faster. But not too fast because you may have students with slower internet connections and it may, they may lose a few seconds uh, if they've got a slower internet connection before the question comes up on this screen. So 30 to 20 seconds is generally quite good. Click on save. First question is now produced. Now I'm going to add a second question. So let's add a second question in here. We're going to click on new question. So that's how we add another question. And what we'll do is for the second one, we're going to do a different example. So we'll choose fill in the blank. So we add this one. Now, in this particular case, what we can do is write some text, uh, create a blank, and then offer the possible uh, alternatives in terms of the correct answer for that blank space. So apologies if this sentence isn't particularly clearly written. I'm just really trying to rush this. But the Normans introduced a lot of blah, blah, blah and political words into the language because they administered the country and the French, and French was therefore used in governmental and organisational contexts. So the answer would be economic. OK, so I've just literally written in the sentence, included a gap and then the students. Now, I can put more than one alternative. So if there are other choices that I wanted to accept, then I could put them in here. OK, I'm not going to do that. I can even put a kind of um, uh, an explanation in if I want to. Um, I, I don't do that either. I'm going to give this one again 30 seconds. And again, I'm going to click on save. So we've now added a second question type. And in this second one, it's simply a question of the students writing in the correct word. Now, because students are using mobiles, my opinion is that that wouldn't be a good idea. I prefer to really just work with multiple choice questions. Um, and I would be, I would advise you to produce about 10 questions. Now, I'm going to add one more question now. So I click on this button here, new question. We'll go back to multiple choice, but I'm going to show you a, a few tricks. One thing that we can do is that we can add an image in. Now I'm going to quickly show you how that works. Let's imagine that we want to add a picture into our question. So I'm going to literally go to Google and I'm going to just simply click on a picture. So I'm going to grab this one here. And all I need to do is right click and copy image address or copy image link. It, it can be either. Click on that and I'm going to jump back to the quiz and I'm simply going to click on image and I'm just going to paste in the link to that image. Now when we're doing that we're not breaking copyright because we're actually not downloading the image rather we're actually using the image because it's already up on the internet on it at a certain point and we're simply using the image address of that particular image and there it uh, comes onto the screen. Now I can also write a question underneath that so I'm going to say um, recently okay just really doing this very simply, many um, technical words have been introduced into English, okay? And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I'm going to actually just change that one there. Okay, many, and we're just going to put in the options. So I'm going to write in now four options of the correct choice. So I'm doing this really, really quickly. I've got a sentence here. The, the picture is obviously a hint. Recently, many blah, blah, blah words have been introduced into English and the students have got four options. The correct answer is technical words. So again, I would click on that, et cetera, et cetera. Again, 30 seconds, click on save. And I can go on adding questions. Now, there's a couple of other things just to keep in mind before we finish. If we come over to here, uh, we can add a picture to go along with the quiz if we want to do that. And it does suggest that we can add a grade and it does actually suggest that we have a minimum of four questions. Now, for this particular example, I'm not going to do that. I would certainly not advise you to add four. I would have a minimum of 10. There's no point in getting students to do something like this. If they're going to pull out their telephones and then answer the quick three or four questions and it's over. I would do a minimum of 10 questions. Once you finish producing your questions, all you need to do is click on done. Once that is done, 
okay and it does seem that it's not very happy about uh, let me just see if I can get away with just simply saving uh, we can for example just say okay this is for university level I'm um, going to allow it to be used by everybody I'm not going to use an image and hopefully it's going to allow me not to add an image up let's just check okay so there we are the quiz is now produced it is a nice idea to actually add an image to a quiz it makes it easier for you to find it we now want to start the quiz so we click on start live we're going to choose classic again instructor paste means that the teacher after each question is answered clicks on start and then the next question comes onto the screen i'm not going to do that i'm going to go to the classic mode i'm going to do classic i'm going to click on continue i'm not going to change any of these settings they're all fine i'm going to click on continue and just the same as before the students would now need to log in now let's quickly do this quiz and see what it looks like okay so just like before we have to put in the number this time the number is four eight six six four two and that should allow us to join this game remember i've only done three questions but at least you'll see how it will work again i'm going to just use the name russell so i'm going to log in if we now jump back as the teacher we should see so we can see then that russell again has logged in and again obviously if we had 20 or 30 students we would say 20 or 30 here and we'd have a big list we're going to start the game because everyone in the class is now logged in we click on the, the start button and let's jump back and see what the student is seeing so we're going to jump back to the student mode and for the student the game starts and remember the student can just work through the questions and in this case first question is going to come onto the screen if you remember the first question English there's a lot of Latin language which were introduced into the language and we've got to just simply click on the answer so I'm going to put by the Normans after 1066 the next question will come onto the screen and we're going to choose the word Chinese which is actually incorrect so that's number two and you notice you've got a picture on the screen and in this last one we actually write in an answer um, so I'm going to just put this in here okay so I'm going to write technical which is incorrect keep in mind that obviously the students are using a mobile so it's kind of difficult of course they can log in using their computers as well but since in a live session they're already using their computers to kind of interact with you via microsoft teams it's probably easier if they just use their telephone so my suggestion is don't do open-ended questions or questions that require the students to input text rather do multiple choice the student gets all the feedback and if we jump back as the teacher very quickly we'll see that as well if we just update now we can see that the student uh, only got one student who participated in this activity but they got the first one right and the other two wrong again it could be really useful information for deciding uh, what you may need to review for example okay so it's quizzes it's good fun it works very well uh, I've used it a lot in, well, not a lot, but I've used it a fair amount. There are other technologies very similar, like, for example, Kahoot or Socrative, but it's a nice alternative and uh, it does add a different element to your live sessions. Great as well if you're teaching hybrid because both the students in the class and the students at home can do the quiz. Okay, really hope that video was useful. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Lots more free videos. Uh, you'll see lots of free videos on the opening page. And of course, there's this section here with all different um, areas of technology. Uh, if you want to follow my work, sign up to my newsletter. That way you'll keep up with all the latest courses, the blogs, the webinars, etc. And of course, you can also follow me on my YouTube channel. And finally... If you do want to contact me about running a course for you or doing some training for you, you can contact me from the website. And thank you very much.